Welcome to video 19 on Train Controller 10 Gold. It's always fun to have a level crossing on your model railway with beams that really close via probably a servo motor and flashing lights. Let's have a look how we can control such a crossing fully automatic in Train Controller. To create a level crossing is super easy because Train Controller has a built-in function for it. Let's go to Edit Mode, click the arrow besides the push button and there we see it, a crossing gate. Let me click it and suppose we want to have a crossing gate over here. Click and there it is. It's now on one track only. If I want it to be over multiple tracks, just uh, look till it becomes an arrow and then drag it over all the tracks. That's all there is to it. Well, wait, of course we want to control a servo motor or uh, a red light. Uh, so we have to go to properties, right click properties and then in the general top I could give it a name if I have multiple of them. But the main uh, function here is to go to the connection top and then select your digital system and give it a address. Uh, of course, in reality, you have to, uh, uh, to connect a DCC decoder and a servo motor to close these gates. When does this gate close and when does it open? Well, Train Controller uses a very simple mechanism, trigger mechanism for that, which is uh, as soon as a route uh, in which this gate is placed is active, then the gate is closed. And if no route is active, then the gate is opened again. Let's simply have a look at that. Let's go out of edit mode. And let me start this uh, intercity counterclockwise that is over here intercity counterclockwise yeah we can see that the route is now active and the gate is closed and we will see as soon as this intercity uh, has arrived here in this block and the length of the train has passed the sensor uh, then uh, that is the setting that I used to free the, the route as we can see that just happened and the gate is open again in many cases this will be fine, this will work always. However, there are two reasons why you may not like this. Reason one is, suppose that you often drive manually with your trains. Yeah? You, you have a little throttle, a manual handheld controller, and you like to drive your trains by hand. Yeah, then this route is never activated and the gate never closes. Um, and other reason could be, that um, this route is physically uh, long or short and that does not open or close the gate at the moment you would like. Maybe it takes far too long for it to close or to open or it closes just before the train arrives and that does not look good. In that case, well, we can build our own uh, level crossing and it's a little bit more work obviously but, but then we have full control on when we want to close and open the gate so let's do a, a, a quick example of that let's go to edit mode again and create our own crossing for that i'm going to use a um, signal that is only because i need a dcc address so let me place a signal over there. That is our uh, gate and flashlight. And let me go to the properties and give it a, or let me give it a name, crossing. Then I can find it if I need to. And the connection is uh, our 88. That is our gate. That is my personal made gate. Uh, now, how to control that gate? I always use for a uh, crossing a counter. Uh, so let's make a counter that is also found here with these switches. Uh, here is a counter. Uh, let's put the counter over there. And that counter is going to count 
how many trains are arriving and how many trains are leaving. If a train arrives, the counter goes up. If a train has left, the counter goes down. So now we just only need to trigger this counter. Let me give this counter a name first. That is also the name crossing, of course. And that uh, is done. The operation in the counter is if the counter is on, which means larger than zero, then I want my uh, gate to close. And the gate was this uh, signal that we just have placed over there. A gate closed, that means red. And if the counter is on zero, then my gate can open again. Uh, that should do it. Let me first test this by hand. I can click it now. Yeah, now it works. If the counter is one or more, two, three, four, no matter how many trains are arriving, my gate is closed. And if I would reset this counter to zero, then my gate is open. So now all we have to do is um, create the triggers for this counter. Let's have a look at this train over here that is going to depart from station Twinwoods. And well, depending on the train speed, uh, suppose that we need to trigger uh, our crossing when the train is somewhere over there. There are two ways to accomplish this. First, uh, yeah, of course, we could uh, add a physical sensor here, a contact indicator. I can place a contact indicator over there. I can double click it and in the operations, uh, yeah, of course I need to have it, give it a connection now in my digital system. Uh, so I don't know what, what the number would be, but uh, suppose it is number 66. Uh, then I give it an operation and that operation is in the accessories. I have a, my counter, the crossing. I add it and it should count up that green arrow up tells me it is incrementing. That's good. So now if a train uh, drives over this sensor, and uh, yeah, this train obviously is going to do that, uh, the placement of this sensor is such that then with the speeds of the train, when it arrives there, the gate is closed. That is of course what you have to take care of. So it depends how long your tracks are, where you have to place this sensor. Does it always need to be a new physical sensor? Well, maybe we have sensors in the blocks already that we could use. Let's have a look at this block mid one. It does have its own sensor. Uh, that's this one uh, that has an, uh, an address already. It is already built inside the track. And the location of the sensor, well, uh, in this schematic, it looks like it is over there, but that is not really true. I always place my sensors immediately behind the turnout. So the sensor of this block mid one is physically is exactly over there. Well, maybe if the train is, is, is still driving slow and if, if this track is very long to trigger uh, the gate already over there, maybe too soon, then the, the waiting time over here is too long, but I can create an action marker uh, a couple of centimeters away. Uh, so let's have a uh, look uh, on how that works. What have I done over here? Um, this is an action marker. Uh, well, let me delete it and we can build it up. This uh, click on the sensor and over here we see that we can insert an action marker. Uh, let's do that. And uh, yeah, then we just give it a number of centimeters. I gave it 100. Uh, which means when that sensor is triggered, the, tr the train controller knows, of course, the speed of the train. So it calculates when 100 centimeter uh, uh, has passed and then it will trigger this action marker. And then I double click this action marker and then in the operations of the action marker, that is where I'm going to add my um, counter, increment my counter. Uh, now I have to <laughs> have double uh, uh, counting. Uh, let's take away that physical sensor. We are going to work with that action marker. So we have taken care of that we count up. Now we still have to count down.
And for that the same holds, uh, if I don't already have a sensor at a proper location, I could place a new sensor. But uh, yeah, this train is going to drive here to West 1. So why not just use that sensor? I also placed an action marker over there. And the operation in that action marker is now going to be uh, to count down and that is selected over here decrement my counter uh, this action marker uh, it is set on tail of train yeah that is because the location of that marker is right behind this turnout which is very close to the uh, uh, gate so if i would have put it on head of train the tail of the train would still be on the crossing so i wait until the tail of the train has passed the sensor is physically located over here and that means that uh, the gate will open or uh, the, the counter will decrement and if the value is zero uh, then the gate will open. Well let's put this to the test exit edit mode and drive. Let me first open a traffic control window and put the blocks of interest in there then we can see a little bit what is happening we are going to follow this train and we can now here see the uh, block sensor and the markers and uh, let me start this sim click here yeah, it's running let me give the train a speed and it is now on the run we can see it ramp up over here the sensor of block mid one is physically located here after the turnout so uh, yeah, now the sensor is triggered. The action marker was 100 centimeters. Yes, there it is. And we see the counter incremented and our gate is closed. But the uh, train controller automatic gate is not because yeah, there is no route active. So this gate also always works also with manual control. Uh, now that action marker uh, is triggered over there, the counter is back to zero and our gate is on green, it is open again. Of course we only did it now for one track, that's why we have a counter, because you also uh, do these triggers for that increment and decrement of the counter for track 2 and track 3 mm -hmm. and then it will always work also when you drive manually. Right, this was it about uh, level crossings and well we have also in the process created a counter and had a look at an action marker. So that's three in one. See you back maybe in the next video. In the meantime, have fun.